Hi there, everybody. This is Chris Schmidt with another Grayscale Gorilla tutorial. I am here with my brand new laptop, and I just came up with we came up with an idea for a tutorial, and I just ran into the closet, the uh, server room here at the studio to record it because it's the quietest place. So I've got uh, hand carts in here and uh, Crayola markers and you know, all sorts of fun things. But why don't we jump right into the tutorial? And the tutorial is going to end right here for me, and then we'll pass it off to Nick to make it look pretty. So what we're going to do is make uh, this word right here white, colored white, and we're going to have this plane effector that we can pass through it, and it's going to rotate the letters and change it into the word black, colored black. So we can swap between these two, and I'm going to show you how to make this from scratch with a little bit of MoGraph, a little bit of oh, that's awesome. yep. um, a little bit of MoGraph, a little bit of Espresso. Uh, so why don't we jump right in? Um, let's see. We have what is going to be a repetitive task. So um, we want to make it as simple for ourselves as possible. So oh, I'm going to start out by making a Mo text. And I'm going to actually re-maximize my cinema so it fits this in the resolution. And I'm going to use a font that is one of Nick's favorites. I don't know anything about fonts, so he said this was a good one to use. So we'll use Gotham. Gotham Ultra. There it is, Gotham Ultra. All right. So all I need is the letter B right now for black. Now, just because I did some tests, uh, I, I'm going to make the depth 300. 300 worked really well, and you'll see why this is a good number in a second. Uh, also, to keep things simple, I'm going to change a line to middle, so it's centering the letter. So now we can go to our top view, and I'm going to grab our blue, blue axis Z, hold down shift, and move it down 150, because it's 300 deep. Moving it down 150 is halfway point. And uh, I'm going to just rename this black, and now we can copy and paste it and name it white and what's the first letter in white it's going to be w so now we do that and i see we have two letters overlapping each other that's no good so i'm going to rotate this one 90 degrees i'm going to move it back up 150 i'm holding now shift on only the x axis of course it's x because we rotated 90 degrees and now i'm going to grab the blue one uh, which is z and we'll move that over 150. so now they are intersecting very nicely. So what are we going to do now? Now we are going to put these inside of a bool object. So we make a bool, we drop them both inside, and it doesn't look like much of anything. It doesn't look like much of anything because we have to go to the bool and we have to change its type to A intersect B, and that's where they intersect. But even now we're still not done because even though from this angle it looks like a B and this angle it looks like a W, we're getting these holes in the top. And the reason we're getting these holes in the top, if we turn off the bool, is because the polygons of the B and the polygons of the W are perfectly intersecting right at that point. And the cinema bools don't like kind of intersecting geometry like that. So our way around that is just going to be super cheap and easy. Uh, I'm going to change my height to, instead of just 200, I'm going to change it to 200.2. Hit enter, and now it's ever so slightly taller. But the ground would still be intersecting, so what I'm going to actually do is go to, I'm still on white, I'm actually going to move it down negative 0.1. So now, because it's 0.2 taller, it's 0.1 above it and 0.1 below it. So now when we turn on the bool, you see we don't get that hole anymore. Like, it's more than perfectly fine there. Okay, um, now before going further, why don't we make two materials, and I'll name one B and name one W, no reason to waste time. And uh, we'll make one black. And now, you would think that you put the black on the black, and you put the white on the white, but it's actually the opposite. You want to, you know, on the B, you got to swap this material to the other one. It's kind of cool that you get this for free, though. Now, everything involved in the W is going to be white, and everything involved in the B is going to be black. So that's pretty cool. Now, uh, what I want to do is put this into a null object right in the center. So the quickest way to do that is just hit Alt-G one time. And now my bool goes into a null, and the null automatically goes to wherever its parent is. So it's already, and that's at zero, 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 but that's, it would, even if we were moved over, that would still work. Now, to make things simple for us, uh, why don't we do a tiny little bit of espresso? So uh, we will do the simplest type of espresso. I'm going to go to my letter, black, my text, go to text. I'm going to right-click and say copy user data interface, because that's a parameter we want. 
Now I'm going to go to my null where I want the controls to be, and I'm going to go user data, paste user data interface. So now it's going to pop up our manage user data dialog or manager. And now we have text, and I can rename that text black because that's where the letter for the black is supposed to be. And the only other thing I want to change is right now it's a multi line string. We don't need it to be multi line, we'll just change it from multi line string to string. And now uh, that's all good, but we actually need it twice. So I can hold down the control button as I drag this black down, and it makes a copy, and now we can just rename that one white. So now we got two user data. I can go and hit OK. And now we have a user data tab with black and white. Now what do we need? Now uh, the simplest way of getting this first step would be to do a set driver set driven. So I'm going to right click on black because that's the parameter we want. What do we want the black to do? We want this text dialog box to drive this text dialog box. So the way we do that is we click on back, black, right click, animation, set driver. All right, the driver is set. Uh, we go into black and now I click on this text. I right click, animation, set driver. Uh, for our purposes, it doesn't matter if you do driven or absolute, I'll click uh, absolute. Now it disappears, and it disappears for a good reason. That's because our Expresso doesn't have anything in here. So we could type in B, and now you see it reappears. And I'll put in W for the other one. Now, we can go inside of our Expresso, and you see what it's doing. It's saying the black parameter from null is driving the text parameter from the black object. Now what I want to do is move this Expresso tag to my null object, but you'll see, see how it says black right there, because it's a black object. When I move this, it's automatically going to change to the null because we move the tag from the, you know its parent. So all we do is drag the black object back into that and it swaps back. Now, we also want to control the white one. So we're already in the Expresso. So why don't we just grab this node. I'm going to drag it down, hold down command. And there we go. Now we have a second one. What do we want this to be? We want this to be the text dialog box, but from white. So I actually just drag white on there because these are identical objects. So they share all of their parameters. But we don't want the black driving around white. So I have to click on this out port. So I click and hold on this little red kind of RNG box. Go to user data and grab white. You see black's already grayed out because we already used it. So now we've got black and white. So there we go. Now black is driving black, white is driving white. But there's one last thing that I thought might be useful. And that would be if, based on whatever we type into this null object, it renames the null so we can tell what it is. So uh, what I'm going to do is actually drag in this null object. And what's the parameter we want to change on the null? Well, it's an input, so it's the blue. And the parameter we want to change is under basic properties, name. We want to change the name of that object. Now what do we want to do? We want to add the letter from black and the letter from white together and then feed that into the null. So what we're actually going to do is make a math node. So I'm going to right click in the blank gray space, go to new node, expresso, calculate, math. I know there's a lot of menus, but it's not, hopefully it's not too scary. So we're adding. Now default, we're adding data type real. We're adding real numbers. We don't want to add numbers. We want to add strings. So I'm going to click on real and then go down to string. And now we can actually add another input. So I'm going to click on this blue and say input. So now we have three things that are being added together. Well, what do we want to add? We want the letter B. Well, we want black on the top. We want white on the bottom. I'm going to move it over a little so you can see how the connections go. And what do we want in the middle? We can actually go to our you know, if we click on the node, you can see that we have an input too. Since we didn't plug anything into it, we can type something in manually. So all I'm going to do is type in space. So now it'll be whatever letter we type in here. So B space W. Connect that to name and we are now completely done with Expresso. So now we click here. Now it doesn't refresh right away. You see as soon as we do one or two things here, the Expresso triggers and now we have uh, B W. So now we've got our first letter. So hopefully now the process can really speed up. So I can just take this, copy and paste. I'll move it down a little, scoot it over. And what do we got next? Uh, B turns into an L, W turns into an H. Excellent. And I'm sure Nick's gonna do some kerning stuff on this, but I'm gonna get as far as I can. Fonts are not, fonts and typography are not my strong suit. Uh, so I copy and paste it again. What's next? Now we got a and I. Uh, I'll just paste again, scoot it over. C and T. Copy and paste. And scoot it over. And the last one will be K and E. Scoot that over a little bit. Excellent. Now we have the word black 
And well, if we go to the side, you'll see that the letter is actually actually we're not see from this side. So uh, let's set up the fracture object, and then we're gonna have to do a little bit more tweaking. So let's go to MoGraph and go to uh, a fracture object. So we're gonna drop all of these letters as they are into the fracture object. And now what's the first thing we wanna do? Actually, the first thing we wanna do, something that's kinda of useful, is we're going to go to Effector Target. And we're going to target, and it automatically it's applied to the fracture because I had fracture selected. Uh, in Target, we can go to Effector tab, and what do I wanna target? I wanna target the camera. So now what's doing is it's facing the camera. Uh, but we have to change a couple settings here. First of all, we don't want it to use pitch. We want it to stay straight up and down, so that's what pitch is doing. And we want to reverse the heading so it's actually facing us. So now what's actually happening is that as I move around, you see how the letters are following me. If I move way over here, I move way over here, the letters are directly facing me. Now, of course, we can still move up and down because we changed the pitch. But what this means is every letter kind of, because the illusion of these letters gets broken as they rotate, uh, we want them facing us as much as possible. So this is kind of our baseline. And you see, it's, it's pretty hard to tell that they're rotated. And now that they're kind of facing us now, after that, we did that first, so now we go to effector and we add a plane effector, and that means this will take place after the target effector. So what do we want here? It's a plane effector, it's automatically applied because I had my fracture selected. Turn off position. And now I'm gonna to go to rotation, and what do we want to do? We want to rotate, for the way I set it up, 90 degrees, boom. And now we can go to fall off, and go to linear, and I'm going to change my orientation to X plus because that's the direction I want to face. I'm going to increase my fall off to 100% because I, I like fall off starting on one point and ending on the other. So now uh, we are essentially where we start, started uh, in the beginning of the, excuse me, we are eventually where we started at the beginning of the video. So I've got this plane effector that I can drag across the scene and it will rotate the letters and reveal the other word. So that's pretty cool. The, but there's one big problem. Uh, and it's shown really well here on mostly the B and the W and also the A and the I. And that's that our kerning gets completely screwed up. And um, that's, a, that's a kind of a little tricky to fix because we need it to be kerned on both the B and the W. But you see those start intersecting. So the best way to go about doing this, I found, is to change our axis on these different letters. So uh, this is an easy, you might want to save your file at this point because it, it might be an easy point to mess it up. But I'm going to click on BW here. Luckily, these are all renamed. You can even say it says black right there and white right there, so that's kind of cool. But we're going to click on the first letter, and I'm going to click on the axis tool. And because if the fracture object was not, you see how they're all lined up. So you see my axis actually doesn't rotate, be it on or off. So now I can freely move this left and right. Now this isn't it, this isn't a necessarily perfect solution because you see that the W is moving not only left but backward in space or forward and closer in space or uh, right. Uh, but this will help get us started. So all you can do is grab the axis for B W and drag it to the left until the kerning looks like it's pretty good. We could also uh, drag it forward, but let's not worry about that quite yet. Uh, and then our I is the other one. I can drag this. I Thing. Okay, to the right, and then make that look kind of centered. Now, what that should have done, because we rotate the axis and we move it on the left, hopefully the rotation doesn't change. I, d I don't think the rotation is going to change. We should turn off the axis tool. And now as I drag this left and right, the B and the A are still where they, they pretty much are still right where they were, but you see the W and the I rotate, and that's because we, we changed the axis when we were in its rotated in the, the rotated state. Um, now you see that everything, like the W's moved a little too far back. So that's something we could change now. And we don't want the axis tool turned on because we actually want to physically move it forward. So we can physically move that forward. Um, I think the A is a little, well, the A looks a little back, but the I looks a little forward. So we could push that back or forward in space. Uh, there isn't, I don't know that there's a perfect way to do it, but now those look a little, those look a little more lined up. The crane's not terrible. Um, the K is a little close, both on the E and the K, so we can probably scoot that over a little. I'm sure Nick will be tweaking these a bit. But I believe that this will conclude my part of the tutorial. So I'm going to save this file out and send it over to Nick, and you will see his part in making this look pretty in part two. So uh, this was a fun one. Uh, hopefully it sounds all right in the closet.
Uh, this is a test to see if I need a microphone when I'm working off my uh, new laptop. But other than that, uh, I'll see you guys soon.